Hey everyone, Mr. Macintosh here, and Apple today released the Mac OS Sequoia 15.6 update. In this video, we're going to go over everything new in the update on new Macs and a preview of OpenCore Legacy Patcher on unsupported Macs. Let's jump in and get started. Along with 15.6, we also got a full slate of Apple updates. Mac OS Sonoma 14.7.7 was released. Mac OS Ventura 13.7.7, and this is most likely the final update for Mac OS Ventura. I made a post about this today on Twitter, talking about that. Three of the four less operating systems that Apple supports on that third level, for example, it's Mac OS Sequoia's current supported OS, then Sonoma and Ventura's that third supported OS for security updates. They usually ended in July. So that's it for Mac OS. Ventura and it's been a great operating system it's still very reliable today and there's a lot of people still running it and it served us very well so so long Mac OS Ventura cheers on the mobile side we've got 18.6 for iOS iPad OS iPad 17.7.9 iOS 16 and 15 remain the same HomePod OS 18.6 TV OS 18.6 Vision OS 2.6 and Watch OS 11.6. Now let's take a look at the update on our demonstration Mac. Here we have a M1 MacBook Air from 2020 and a T2 Mac Mini from 2018. On our Intel Mac, the update is 1.43 gigabytes and that is coming from 15.5. We'll click on update now and we'll walk through the process on both and we'll time to make sure that the process is the same from previous updates. On the Apple Silicon device from 15.5, it is 2.84 gigabytes. We'll click on update now and we'll type in our password. Okay, we'll get those guys kicked off and then we will time the update. It's gonna restart a couple times and we'll be right back. Okay, our Intel T2 just got kicked off. I started that off first. When you see this, on the Intel machine. It's actually updating the Bridge OS. And while we're waiting, we got our Apple HD 30 inch cinema display working again. We got a brand new power supply. And we also have a USB camera that I can use when I'm testing on the uh, unsupported Macs when there's issues with the camera support. And while we wait for these updates, I'm curious, I always like to poll you guys. If you're gonna install 15.6, what are you gonna install it on? Do you have a supported Mac? or do you have an unsupported Mac and you're planning on installing? I always like to see what kind of Macs you guys have out there. There's 86 different Macs that are supported with OpenCore Legacy Patcher and a bunch of supported Macs. But I always like to see what you guys have and what the majority of you are installing the Sequoia updates on. M1 MacBook Air is back up and let's see how long it took to install. It took eight minutes to prepare after rebooted, four minutes to finish the install for a total of 12 minutes. And that puts it right in line with the larger release updates here compared to the smaller point release updates. And that's why I keep track of all the different updates and see how long it takes to install. Now you can see this is where the T2 slows up, right? So it still has nine minutes remaining on the update before we even got done over here on the M1. Okay, we are back up on our T2 Mac Mini, and you can see total time, 24 minutes from preparation to installation time. The big time crunch here is that 16 minutes that we talked about for the extra time needed for the Intel update, and that is our T2 Mac Mini. Okay, so what's the build version? of the 15.6 update. Here's a little tip. I usually show it in terminal with SW underscore version, but in here in software update, you can actually just click on Mac OS Sequoia and you can get the build version 24G84. And I go over that because if you were running the beta version, you can see here all the beta release candidates in Mac OS Sequoia here. So if you were running, for example, uh, one of these versions, you want to make sure that you are on the release candidate. For example, that's even more important because sometimes there's a release candidate too. The release candidate for iOS was 84. When the public version was released, it was 86, so it jumped two build versions. That's why I go over those. Now let's do a tip of the video. Actually, I'll do two tips. And let me know in the comments if you know these tips or not, or if this is the first time you heard of this. If you want to hide a window, you can always minimize it, right? But there's a quicker way. If you want to be able to hide really quick, you can use Command H to hide. So quick Command H, hide. So for example, if you're uh, cruising the sports page and your boss walks up, boom, gone. And you can actually do that for as many windows as you have open. For example, I have Safari and Calendar behind here. So you can do Command H and H to get them out of there. The second quick tip is, did you know that you can reposition the icons in your menu bar? All you need to do, let's say you wanted to move the sound over here, hold down Command, and then click on it and you can drag it anywhere you want. Same thing, anywhere you want. 
Pretty cool tip. So one of the things I like to check, and we've been struggling on this, especially for unsupported Macs, is whether the automatic software updates are turned on again. So if you click on here and you can see automatic updates, if it just if you have them off and you just see security responses, that means that they're off and you only get security updates like Gatekeeper and XProtect. But if you go in here and you see download and install new updates here, like we've seen with a couple unsupported Macs, make sure you go back in here and, and fix it. It does not look like Apple changed that with this update, but again, we have seen that live on updates. The other thing that we've seen happen is sometimes Apple Intelligence re-enables itself. Now, I forgot to actually turn this off this time, so let me know if you had Apple Intelligence off, if it's turned on and the same thing with software updates. If you need to install Sequoia or do some troubleshooting, the full installer 15.6 was released by Apple along with the Apple Silicon M1 IP SW restore file. Let's go over firmware. On Apple Silicon, the firmware was updated for 15.6 and the iBoot version. And on Intel, the T2 Bridge OS update was also updated and the firmware on the t2 intels was also updated and that sometimes hasn't updated in a while but it was on 15.6 safari also got an update to 18.6 and got a bunch of webkit fixes it jumped from 2 to 3 11 11.3 11 all right now that those details are out of the way let's talk about what's new in macOS sequoia 15.6 If you're a veteran viewer of this channel, you know what I'm going to say here. But I want you to read this, and I want you to say something here in the comments. Tell me what you think about it. Is it not a big deal that they do that? Am I overreacting that I would like a little bit more for a major update to the currently supported operating system? Or is it no big deal? Just install the update and who really cares what's inside? Let me know. So not being one to just stop and figure that there's nothing in this update, I went over to the developer release notes to see if there's anything over there. And I never usually come over here because there's usually the stuff that's in here is for developers, like app changes and stuff like that, right? But we actually do have an update here. Fixed. Finder and Apple Configurator may be unable to successfully restore some devices from DFU mode. That's pretty important, isn't it? And that's why I also go over the Apple Silicon IPSW releases. Because you don't need it until you have a problem with your Mac and then you do need it and you need to know what it is, where it's located, and how to restore your Mac. Imagine trying to do that and something's not working right and you have no clue. Well, the good thing is it's fixed in 15.6. Wait a minute, look at these enterprise notes. And if you don't know and you're new to the channel, I am a Mac admin and I administer thousands of Macs in an enterprise environment for a Fortune 500 company. These fixes are for enterprise government and education. We have to deal with all these different things, right? Security, firewall, Wi-Fi, Ethernet, all this different stuff. So when something's not working, we have to report that in and these are the very important notes. Now, I want to say that the Apple Enterprise team that I interact with, they are very responsive and they're very helpful and they hear us and when we get our tickets in for this stuff it's getting fixed so look at this though i mean we've got six different fixes in here showing us that there is things going on in the operating system but it's so funny on the user side non-admin that it's almost like it's nothing's happening right and that's why i always think it's important to know what's patched in the operating system let's take a look at this the first one Software update fetch full installer command completes successfully. Now, this is an important one if you need to be able to pull down or list out all the full installers that are available on Apple servers. So this, com actually there's a syntax in there, look at this double dash or that single dash. So if we copy this and we paste this into terminal, actually what we wanna do is we wanna list full installers and do a double dash. What it'll do is it's going to run out to Apple's servers 
and check all the available versions for the Mac that you're checking on. So if you're on an M4 Mac, you're not going to see anything for Mac OS Ventura. But check this out. Since we're using a 2013 Mac Pro running OpenCore Legacy Patcher, we see Sequoia 15.6 all the way back to High Sierra 10.13.6. How cool is that? Here's one thing where Apple does do a really good job on is in the security update. So if we go to macOS Sequoia 15.6 security update, there's 72 CVEs patched here and nine WebKits patched. So this is a huge security update. If you want to keep your Mac secure, this is an important update to get going almost as soon as possible because there's a bunch of important security updates in here to protect your Mac. Now let's take a look at the Geekbench benchmark scores. I didn't even do it for 15.5. Did you even notice? Did you even care? Let me know. I keep going back and forth whether I should include this or not. Uh, again, I only do it to see if there's any big swings in the update, like there's performance problems. We got 1560 on the single core and a 6742 on 15.4.1 and on 15.6, 1574 and a 6729 very close. On our M1 2020 MacBook Air, we had a 2402 on a single and an 8782 on 15.4.1 and on 15.6 a 2396 and an 8825. let's look over open core legacy patch for unsupported max and our status update for 2.4.0 as of this taping july 29th at 11:30 p.m 2.4.0 is a current update and we do not have a kernel debug kit available yet apple has not released it this is all on apple to do this and until that's done unsupported mac that needs a kdk for example amd based machines are not going to see that so it's going to be using the 15.5 kdk so if we look at those releases here um, we can see right away we've got it for 26 but we do not have anything for 15.6 now what does that mean the 15.5 and sometimes even 15.4 kernel debug kits are usually okay and compatible but still you want to be even with the 15.6 kernel debug kit and 15.6 os but again it's not going to be the end of the world that's where this system 17 inch late 2011 is running and it requires a kdk but it has the 15.5 and it's running okay so when it went out to check it didn't find one and it's using the current KDK that's out there, developer folder, KDKs, and there's our 15.5. Now, sometimes Apple will release it the next day, or sometimes it, it takes a couple days to do that. If it's released, you'll see it out here between the 26 and the 15.5, and I'll have to date the page because, for example, the Metal of Support package is out there for 15.6, so those guys are good to go. You'll see that pop up and you'll get that immediately, but that's not due to Apple. This has happened on the Open Core Legacy Patcher server side here, and it runs on a timer. It checks for updates, and when it finds it, it builds this package for download. So that's ready to go, and you can see that in the release pages here, and there it is, ready to go. Keep an eye on that, and if you don't even want to update until you see that, that's fine too, because just because this 2013 Mac Pro worked and this 2011 MacBook Pro worked doesn't mean that there might be an issue with your computer, and you need that KDK. So it's a tough call. My thought is, is that the odds are slim that there's gonna be an issue, but if you wanna wait, then do it. There's no rush. And you can also see if there's any other reports of issues with the 15.6 update in unsupported Max, because right now, usually if there is an update with OpenCore Legacy Patcher, the developers will release like a, a hotfix, like 2.4.1. Or if someone does report an issue, they might even be working on something now to fix it. Or there might not be any issues and 2.4 is fine. Keep an eye out on my page to see, or the, the website to see if the KDK, because what happens is, is as soon as it drops, then you do your 15.6 update, and then you'll get the pop-up for the KDK. Now, if you've already installed 15.6 like this system, just run the post root patches again, it'll check, find it, install it, and apply those root patches with the latest KDK. 
Same thing with our 2017 15-inch MacBook Pro on 2.4.0 and 15.6, running very smooth, no issues to report, and on our Mac Pro 2013. Let me know if you see any issues with OpenCore on your install. I always like to read those feedbacks too. And again, with 83 different models, sometimes there's very small issues that pop up. There's no way to know unless someone reports them or talks about them. That is OpenCore Legacy Patcher for unsupported Macs, a quick preview. I will be doing my entire fleet in the next day or two to do a full testing to make sure everything's okay. Keep an eye out for that video. And that's 15.6. This is probably going to be one of the less major or larger updates for macOS Sequoia. Then it'll move to 15.7 and then go into security update mode. And then it'll be the same release as when macOS Tahoe goes live. So I hope you enjoy this video. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments and we'll catch you in the next video. Thanks.